John here guys and today we're talking about the Isshin Senecan. Whoa, this is the latest in a string of releases of Cinewoop crafts. Now Cinewoop has started to deviate in its meaning. At first we meant any whoop style with the duck, small, brushless uh, craft, very similar to this with an HD camera on board. But now what it's starting to mean is a three inch or even a five inch with ducks carrying a GoPro Hero 7. So this is the former out of those two categories. It does come with a nice Isshin uh, hard case to be able to carry it. Inside that case, you'll find some extra props. Now these are the Emacs Avan two inch. These are actually pretty good props. Comes with a little wrench, hex key, some extra hardware. Uh, instructions and the controller to operate the Cadex Tarsier camera. That's right, this is the Tarsier. Now, what do you notice at first glance? The ND filter that covers both of these cameras right here is cracked. That's right, I crashed it. Here's the crash that that happened. Boom, hit it straight into a car. I'm not really sure why I thought it was gonna be a good idea to try to fly underneath a car. And I'm also not sure why the car I decided to try to fly underneath was a Honda Fit, which is like five inches from the ground. Uh, not the best idea, guys. But the filter performed its job quite well, in addition to giving you some nice looking footage. Um, although it is completely cracked, it did save both the HD camera and the FPV camera from breaking. Now, um, you can see that those two cameras are right there on top of each other. And if you don't know, the Tarsier is a dual camera setup. You have one camera um, that records f up to 4K HD footage and the other camera records your HD footage. Now, what does that do for you? If you're used to flying the Split or the Turtles or any of those other HD recording cameras, you know that latency in your FPV feed when you're trying to fly and do crispy moves can be problematic. So this solves that by having two totally separate cameras embedded on here. But is that a mistake? The fact that you have both of the cameras in one unit, uh, along with the HD recording board, which is right there in the middle stack, that's where your SD card plugs in, means that if you break one piece of this uh, three-way component, you are out quite a bit of money. And these are like 90 to $100 just for the camera. Uh, so, whoa, that leads me to believe that this is very reminiscent of if you grew up in the 90s or early 2000s before your 4K 70 inch LCD panels, you had the smaller TVs that were like 27 inch, 32 inch, and sometimes you would have the available um, convenience of having your VHS, uh, VCR, DVD player and, can and uh, TV all built in one. And the downside to that was, if one of those three things broke, you were out an entire unit, pretty much. You couldn't replace them individually. So while it is somewhat convenient to have all of the mounting done very easily, I'm a little skeptical on the long-term um, functionality of this, especially on this particular product where if you're flying at this uh, very, you know, reasonable, what is this, like a 25 degree camera angle, so it's very low camera angle for slow, smooth HD footage, your camera is very much the first thing that is gonna take any sort of a front end hit. Uh, so, this is using a very similar power system to the Bushido, the URHD85, but this Tarsier camera does add a bit of weight on there, so it's gonna perform similarly, but with extra weight. If you've ever flown one of your five inch quads with a GoPro Hero, um, you can tell that's the kind of decrease in performance that you're gonna have because of that extra weight. So similar for this. It's still able to do some light acro, but not as much as the UR85. Now, because of that extra weight, uh, both with the camera system and the battery, and if you notice, it's kind of tall and the camera sits a little bit high. When you have a 3S battery below, it actually creates a pretty good balance. So this is smoother in the air than that UR85HD. 
um, what it is not as smooth as just it's not quite as smooth as the iFlight Cinebi 75 HD um, so this is really a good all-arounder though because that iFlight cannot really do any acro to speak of this can do some light acro it is still pretty smooth in the air all around um, having a fun little quad like this I would say this would probably be my recommendation if, if 100% smoothness was your goal then I would say probably go with the 75 HD but if you want to have smooth ability to go indoors if you're good on the sticks and the ability for some speed you know you can't really beat this I think that these four bladed Avan props really help to set this one apart guys I think that's what's responsible for some of that performance that you're still able to get in such a heavy package now I've ran this on 3s the entire time um, it comes with I believe it's a 300 milliamp uh, 3s pack and it has performed admirably I actually had someone over at the house they wanted to be able to try a quad for the first time and I was like whoa okay probably none of the five inches are gonna go and uh, a lot of my whoops were out of commission so I gave them this and of course they weren't able to fly for more than three or five seconds at a time took a couple of light crashes but the ducts did protect it quite well now one thing that isn't quite as robust is this upper canopy piece if you can see I have a crack down below the camera right here and I have a crack on the side of the camera mount right here now I did put this thing through its paces in addition to crashing directly head-on into that Honda Fit I actually also took it to a playground tried to weave in and out of that playground equipment to make sure and get some hits because I wasn't quite sure how sturdy this camera mount was going to be now so if you do see any jello in that playground footage it is likely because of those little cracks now i'm guessing if you had to replace this it's probably going to be pretty cheap it's probably going to be like three to four dollars to get a new one of these i'm not sure if they're available yet um, so i do like that even with a few cracks it seemed to fly just fine um, but note this is for getting crisp clean footage it's not really meant to be like a bandeau basher so i was pushing it a little bit further to the limits of what this thing can potentially hold up to now the caddx tarsier camera itself now kebab warned us that this was an extremely unfriendly user experience but i said to myself look kebab's my boy but he shoots his videos on a cell phone I've been in the indie film scene, guys. I've shot video on Panasonic P2 cards. I've played with the Red One camera, and I shoot this channel. Uh, I'm on my third, fourth camera now. I'm on a Sony mirrorless A7 series Sun, shooting in 4K when possible, but sometimes I actually only do 1080p because I'm lazy. But I thought to myself I'll be able to figure out this camera system no problem just because I'm more familiar with using cameras this makes no sense this is your your camera experience regardless of what you're used to shooting with does not translate to this um, being able to you know all I really wanted was for it to be in 4k 30 with auto record turned on it's not turned on by default so you have to go into the settings and mess with it as two buttons that are completely useless um, you have to download the app I downloaded it from my iPhone I couldn't get it to stay on it just kept crashing every time I launched it I had to put it away before I threw it into the trash um, because I was really frustrated the next day for some reason the app would stay on I had to go into the instructions and learn that if you hold one of these buttons for like eight seconds the Wi-Fi will turn on it's not very clear which one of the two buttons are because in the diagram you can't tell which you know orientation is facing forward so I had to try both eventually I was able to get the app connected and it wasn't super clear on how to get that resolution of 4k 30 auto record turned on but eventually I got it this was a nightmare it was a headache Caddx your user experience is absolutely terrible kebab was right I was hoping that he was wrong and my camera you know experience was gonna allow it to be a little easier for me uh, it's not it's not a camera thing it's a caddix thing so get the app installed figure out how to turn the wi-fi on and then you can change these settings 
So who's this for? If you want an HD Cinewhoop that you can take with you anywhere, look at how small it is, fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, if you want to be able to do some light acro, but get the best picture possible, if you want to be able to have these replaceable ND filters that protect your camera, if it does take a hit, it performs its job perfectly. Uh, these replacement uh, filters are, I believe, four or five bucks. I'll put the link in the description below. If you don't want to build a full cinema and carry a GoPro Hero 7, this is the next best thing. And I have not had one that can perform on this level. I do feel like the camera, the 4K recording on the camera of the Tarsier is a little bit better than the Turtles 2. Although it's not like drastically better, but it is. Um, and if you're not gonna be trying to fly this on a racetrack, which who is, it doesn't go that fast, um, then this is a really, really good option. And I personally love the looks of this thing. This kind of single eye at the front really reminds me of some kind of robot, like on Half-Life or some kind of game like that. <laughs> I just love the aggressive look. So Ishin and Cadix have really uh, got something that is very aggressive and cool looking. So thanks guys. Thank you.